The next generation of gaming is going to look a lot different than today. Let's take a look at Google. What's up everybody, Brad here, and today we're going to be talking about next-gen gaming, and I've been doing a series on diving into all of the major players in the next-generation console, gaming, streaming, wars, whatever you want to call them. And on this edition, we're going to be talking Google, because Google is a, a big player entering the market, and I think they've got a lot to offer. The question is, will people like what they have to offer? And as we've done with other companies, we're gonna be rating all this on cloud technology, fan base, IP services, and good old fashioned hardware. So without further ado, uh, if you want to learn more about the other videos I've done, just check out the description. I'll have them all linked there, but let's dive into Google for it, shall we? So cloud technology, this might seem like an easy one. You would think it's Google. They've got great cloud technology and they absolutely do. They know how to run services at scale. They under big data, they understand big data, they understand latency. But a little little caveats here. The reason why I say that is I would argue very easily that Amazon, AWS, and Microsoft's Azure are better than Google's public cloud services. Now, I'm not saying that Google doesn't have good technology. I'm just saying that they are not the best breed in the industry. I think Amazon and Microsoft beat them in that category. But at the same time, Google understands how this works. I mean, think of Google. When you go to search, they, they've mastered and, and mastered, I don't use that word lightly, that idea of entering inputs and getting data back. Now, granted, gaming is a little bit more complicated than that, but Google has scaled that service up very well. For this, I'm going to give Google a B. I, I, again, they're, they're not quite A, only because I think Amazon and Microsoft are better, but Google gets a B, and, and that's pretty representative of how good, I mean, that's not an easy grade to get because you need a lot of infrastructure to get that kind of a score, and, and Google's done a good job there. Now, the interesting one with Google is going to be fan base because you could argue this from a lot of different angles. I mean, they've got Android, but is Android really have fans or are people fans of the hardware? Like specifically, I don't, I mean, there's people who like Android. I'm not trying to argue that and that's fine, but I think people are more typically more loyal to say like the Samsung Galaxy brand than they are to say Android, because if they were really fans of just pure Android, then everybody would be using a Pixel phone. And we know that's not the case because every vendor under the sun is now reskinning or skinning or whatever you want to call it of Android. Yes, I know there's some phones that don't skin it, but for the major players, uh, a lot of them are adding their own little, you know, variety to it. And then I don't think people are necessarily loyal to Google because of search. Search is the best product. But if Microsoft's Bing was somehow better than Google, I don't think there would be like people like clinging onto Google because they're, they're in love with the brand. Now, Google certainly does have fans. I'm not, again, not trying to argue that, but I don't think that their fan base is anywhere nearly as strong as say like the Xbox, uh, like PlayStation or even Apple. And I think this might be actually one of Google's weakest links because I think that I'm going to give them a D and I know some people are going to argue against that, but I don't, I don't think that there's that loyalty to the Google brand like there is to the Xbox and PlayStation. Now on the IP side, this is, this is an interesting one because Google announced their online service Stadia and they also announced a new game, um, studio, right? They're, they're going to try, they're, they're going after this market. The question is, how long have they actually been going after this market? Because you can't just spin up a game studio and then all of a sudden have a, a AAA title game. Like these things take years, years to make, unless they're gonna go out and just start buying companies, then that's a whole different story. But like Amazon, they're lacking those big brand name titles and exclusivities that we, at least as of yet, nothing has been announced. There's still a lot of questions about Stadia. And again, I'm gonna give Google a D on IP just because compared to even the likes of like, Microsoft, uh, especially Sony and Nintendo, they are way behind, way behind, because you gotta imagine, uh, why would a company build for Stadia? And let's just talk about services here, because I think this is actually one of Google's stronger points, right? So they announced Stadia, although, despite the fact that I think this is one of the stronger points, they did say you do need a 25 megabit per second requirement for 1080p 60 frames per second. Granted, a lot of people have that, have that type of bandwidth, but more people don't. And that, that's pretty heavy. Now, granted, you could scale things down and get uh, and not need that 25 megabit per second, but okay, we'll move on from there. Anyways, Stadia looks super interesting. It's Google's variety of game streaming, and I think it's going to be a big deal. 
eventually. I think it's going to take a while for this to catch on and we'll see how long Google sticks with it. But we need big name publishers to take advantage of the platform, to put their game on Stadia. We don't quite know what games are going to be available yet. Google is very quiet in talking about how they're going to position this in the market. We don't know the pricing yet. We know its availability is later this year. And we know the, the service works fairly well. We They had a public, well, quasi-public trial of it. I think it was called Project Stream. And so Stadia is going to help elevate Google Sync. And then they have other reinforcing services such as YouTube. YouTube is by far where the most video content is watched every day. Now, not necessarily gaming content. That, I think, would probably go to Twitch. But Google has a massive li library of video content and people watching it every single day on YouTube. And that is a nice funnel, again, for their services to help align people over to Stadia. We've already seen that ability to watch a game trailer, click play, and in five seconds, you're actually playing the game in your browser. That is a very powerful feature that you cannot undersell. And then they also have things like Google Assistant, which has its own sort of loyalty I would think would be strong but it, it's good Google has the best uh, digital assistant on the market and Android granted Android is not a gaming specific service but it is something that they can again help use to funnel people towards Stadia and their other gaming platforms for this I'm going to give Google a B it, I think they 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 have the ability to get up into that A caliber but they're missing some components, right? And we don't know how well things are going to work. All we've seen so far from Google is things effectively on paper. We've seen some canned demos and all that good stuff. But we haven't actually seen uh, the real world scenarios, the people at home, and it reaching a broad scale of users at this time. So they have the ability very easily to jump up to that next bracket if they can prove that uh, people are going to actually play on their service and that vendors are actually going to put their game on their service. So, yeah, we got that. And then on the hardware side, this is an interesting one because while this is not the Google controller, Google is doing something very interesting with their controller. They're making it connect directly to Wi-Fi so that there's less latency for working with Stadia. That being said, that's about all they have. I don't think the Google, uh, like the Google Home Mini or a Chromecast maybe, but they're definitely in a better position than I would say than Amazon, which got a, a lower score. But I think Google's hardware rating is a, is a C. And again, it's because they don't have that dedicated box. They're, they're dependent on roughly a 25 megabit per second uh, connectivity, which again, is that's a pretty high barrier. That's a pretty high barrier. Yes, I know I'm going to hear from a lot of people saying, I have 100 megabit. That's fine, but not everybody does. And so everybody that doesn't is instantly washed out from, from this. And you got to remember that typically people, that, well, I guess back in the 56K days, uh, I remember being the only one allowed to use the phone line, but most people share an internet connection with their family, uh, with brothers and sisters and all that good stuff. So you not only need a 25 megabit per second requirement, but you need that portion dedicated explicitly to your gaming. And so we'll walk through here. We got Google Cloud with a B, the fan base with a D, the IP with a D, services with a B, and hardware with a C for Google. Now, this is just a look at how Google is... It, is positioning itself and i want to be cautious here granted google is a late competitor to the game but you know who else was a late competitor at one point was microsoft and so it's google has the ability and the cash to become a very serious player with stadia already being shown off they have the infrastructure they've got some unique hardware and as long as google sticks with it they have the ability to become a very serious next-gen gaming player the question becomes is google going to be able to get the ip that it needs to attract people to it or not because again as we know from the console sales ip is what sells if google has a better cloud streaming service if Stadia is better than xCloud and whatever Sony is working on and whatever Amazon is likely working on, that could be a huge win. But again, they're going to need the IP. It's going to be a longer road, I think, for Google to become a sustainable player in this market. That doesn't mean they can't. It just means that Microsoft and Sony have an easier path forward because they've already got many of the key elements in place. But Google has a lot of money. They've got the cloud infrastructure and they've got a service that's been announced. It's going to be interesting to watch them.